بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا وإمامنا وحبيبنا أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه وتابعين وما تدعون بأسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك دعونا لنا إلا نعلمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلى الوقت من لساني يفقه قولي I praise Allah Almighty My sent prayers and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his noble family, righteous companions, and all those that follow him with right guidance until the day of judgment. Ameen. Glory be to you, O Allah. No knowledge can we accept that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. My dear brothers and sisters, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I will continue uh, with the tafsir of the verses from Surah Al-Baqarah. And today we are upon a new section, the beginning of uh, what is a new section after the story of Adam alayhi salam. So the verses here begin talking about Bani Israel and do so for, as you know, many, many pages forward. Okay? So the first thing that we want to deliberate over and think about is the mention of the story of Bani Israel after talking about the story of Adam alayhi salam with the Khilafah with the angels and then what happened to him and Hawa and the Shaytan and how they were expelled from Jannah and now we have mention of the story of Bani Israel and it seems Allah, that this what's happening here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about how Allah gave the responsibility of the Khilafah to Adam alayhi salam and required of him certain moral things, commands, prohibitions, and then mentioned very clearly that whoever follows the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will not have any no sadness and no fear will be upon them, right? And he says those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deny his signs, they are the ones who are going to be in the hellfire. And then Allah Azza wa gives us one of those prime examples of how not to take the responsibility of Khilafah. The exact opposite of what you are supposed to do. He gives you an example of those who did disbelieve and deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showed their ultimate ingratitude to Allah and His blessings. So they clearly chose number two. They didn't uh, follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it continues this way. And uh, subhanAllah Surah Al-Baqarah focuses on Bani Israel and their story. And to be precise, the story of Bani Israel is replete in the Quran. You find it everywhere. In fact, no peoples have been spoken about like Bani Israel. And this must have a wisdom. There must be something to be derived from that. Some of the possibilities. Number one, these are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given many blessings and bestowed such favor upon them like no one else. And he mentions this, and he reminds them of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in addition to the favors, required things of them. They were the most ungrateful, and they exhibited some of the most egregious disbelief kufr and ingratitude in response to all of those favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And therefore it is a dire warning to everyone else. Beware, do not be like them. We just read subhanAllah verse after verse 
about that history, we have to learn from it. This is an example of how not to be. And ultimately, it is also talking to them directly. It's an address to Ben Israel. We have Ben Israel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Jews in Medina at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu because we know Surah Al-Baqarah is a Madani Surah. So they are being addressed as well. And being reminded of this. So as you can see, there are many reasons and wisdoms to be derived from the fact that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us about Bani Israel. And it just keeps going on and on and you find them being mentioned in many other places in the Quran as well. Ya Bani Israel. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Ba'da Abu Nashim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati al-lati an'amtu alaykum. وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِي أُوْفِ بِعَهْدِكُمْ وَإِيَّايَ فَرْهَبُونَ Ya Bani Israel, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address them now as Ya Bani Israel? And notice subhanallah, he's talking to them directly with Ya Al-Mukhaqama, Ya Bani Israel, oh Bani Israel. Oh, children of Israel. We hear Israel a lot today. But that is a different Israel. And it, uh, it conjures up very negative images of terrorism. And the killing of, uh, and the shedding of blood, of innocent blood by the Zionists. They took that name. But this is not what is being mentioned here. What is being, what is meant by Israel here, children of Israel? What is Israel? Do you have any Israel? Israel is Ya'qub alayhi salam. Barakallahu feek. Israel is the Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam. Why? Does he have this name? Why does he have this other name? Why is it not Ya Bani Ya'qub? Ya Bani Israel. Furthermore, we know that this is addressing the Jews. But he is referring to them as children of Israel. Okay? And this is this seems to indicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking about. Uh, a genealogy. You who are children of Israel. So there are many things to unbox here that we need to try to understand. First of all, yes, Yaqub alayhi salam is Israel. Also known as Israel. But interestingly, if you look at the Quran, he is never mentioned as Israel by name except once. Him himself. So you find Israel in this term, Ya Bani Israel. But only once do we read, كُلُّ الطَّعَامِ كَانَ حِلَّ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِلَّا مَا حَرَّمَ إِسْرَائِيلُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ So here is a mention of Ya'qub as Israel, with the name Israel. Why? Inshallah we'll try to see that if we ever get to that ayah. إِلَّا مَا حَرَّمْ إِسْرَائِيلُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ So here he's mentioning him as Israel. And this is Ya'qub alayhi salam. By the consensus of the Mufassirin and the ulama. And in fact there is a narration that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked the Jews, Do you know who Israel is? Do you know that Israel is Ya'qub? And they said, Allahumma na'am. Yes, we, 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 we know this. So Israel is Ya'qub. Now, uh, so it seems, Wallahu a'lam, his name is Ya'qub, and that's why he keeps being mentioned as Ya'qub, okay? And uh, mentioned when, he's, when Allah Azza wa talks about Ibrahim and Ishaq and Ya'qub. All the time in the Quran you see the name Ya'qub. His name is Ya'qub. Israel seems to be
be more like some kind of a title, possibly an honorary title. And in this we do not accept the, what seems to be the fabricated account of why Yaqub got the name Israel, as is mentioned uh, in the corrupted Bible. And I'm not going to go into the details, but the point is that in their account, his name was changed. This is not really what we are seeing here. He's still mentioned as Yaqub in the Quran. But here it seems to be more like a title. Okay? But there the claim is that after a certain event, his name was changed to Israel. And they have all kinds of deductions based on what they believe the name Israel means. The scholars of Islam, the Mufassirun, gave a different uh, account. And what seems to be a much more appropriate one for us to understand why Allah Azza wa is calling them Ya Bani Israel. And that is that this ending, this suffix in the word Israel, il, il is a reference to Allah. Isra, as many scholars have said, may mean, and the claim is that this is what it means in their language, that it means servant, like abd, okay? Or a person of Allah, a person of God, a man of God, something along those lines. So it's an honorary term, honorary title, that this is the great prophet Yaqub the man of God, Yaqub So it could be Allah is addressing them as such and reminding them, you are the children of Yaqub, of this great man, also known as Israel, the man of God, who obeyed Allah, who followed his commandments, as you are supposed to do. And we do this a lot. Whenever you want to remind someone of their ancestors, you say, you are the son of so-and-so. You are the children of so-and-so. How can you be doing this? Or, as you are the children of so-and-so, you should be acting likewise. So you remind them of uh, their, their ancestry. Yeah, then you saw it. Very interestingly, until today, this is a term they love and a term they aspire to. The Bnei Yisrael, they say. They want to be the Bnei Yisrael. So this is a term that they love and aspire to. Very interestingly. And you will find many Jewish congregations, especially in the States, by this name, Bnei Yisrael. It seems, Allah, Allah is calling them by the name they love. As well, Ya Bani Israel. And subhanAllah, we may derive from this that yes, when you want to advise, <laughs> use a good name. Don't tell your child, you idiot, what are you doing? One, two, three, four, this is what you should do. My son, you are so smart. How could you get this grade in class? Call them by a name, by something encouraging. Ya Bani Israel. A name they like, and they want to remember, and they aspire to. This, this could be some of uh, the, what we understand from why Ya Bani Israel is being used in the first place, as opposed to Ya Ben Ya'qub. And why in the first place Ya'qub is known as Israel. But in their understanding, his name has been changed to uh, Israel, Israel. Ya Ben Israel, 
all children of Israel. And by the way, the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Torah and the uh, uh, Bible, is replete with this term, the children of Israel. All of them. So they have been called this uh, since then, since antiquity. يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلُ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَتِي الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْهِ Remember my favor, نِعْمَتِي الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ My favor that I bestowed upon you. And here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions favor as an individual favor, the meaning is not that it is one favor. It is actually a term as in Arabic, uh, you will find many times a reference to one meaning all, meaning the category of blessings, not one blessing. He's not talking about one blessing. He's talking about all of his blessings upon them. And notice, subhanAllah, this way of disciplining as well. Before mentioning anything else, he says, remember the blessing. Softens their hard hearts before he tells them and he commands and he prohibits. What are these blessings? You tell me. You've read the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. So many blessings. Allahu Akbar. What are some of those blessings? Prophets descending from Jacob, Isaac. Right, they got they, they had so many prophets come to them to remind them and to bring them back. Right? What else? What is that, brother? The foods they got. The miraculous food. Al man was salwa. The manna and the quails. Right? that were given to them in, 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 in their exodus as a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And man was salwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaded them under the clouds and gave them the man was salwa. Absolutely. And this is mentioned also in the Bible. Yes, brother. Shaykh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. Allah akbar from Fir'aun. Allah split the ocean for Musa alayhi salam. The ocean was split for you in order for you to be saved. Yes? Definitely. Musa alayhi salam, the being sent to him to them. Uh, so many blessings. The, the the twelve springs. Twelve springs for each of the twelve tribes of Bani Israel. Allah Akbar. One blessing after another. Did they meet those blessings with gratitude? Subhanallah. This is a people with which there is a covenant, and there are so many covenants between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his slave servants, and especially then Israel. Here he mentions this covenant between him and them. Be true to your covenant with me. This is the meaning of bi'ahdi. Meaning, be true to your covenant with me, the covenant that you made with me. If you are such, then I will be true to my covenant with you. What that covenant is, we will see. Of course, Allah Azza wa Jal, there is none who is more truthful than Allah. There is nobody who will give back and more justly and kindly than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't even need to say this. That's it. 
you will get what you deserve from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is so kind. Allah is so gentle, so merciful. Does that mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break his covenant? Never. Nobody is more truthful than Allah azza wa jalla. But it just means do your part. Fulfill your promise to me and I will fulfill my promise to you. That's the meaning. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promise, does not renege. He says the, the actions of, of human beings, not Allah azza wa jalla. And even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers, if you made some kind of a deal with your enemies and for some reason you are going to break it off, you tell them first, Allah Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not break his promise, but fulfill your promise and Allah azza wa jalla will fulfill his. So what is this hand? What is this covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from them? Many of the Salaf and the Mufassirin of the Tabi'een and others said this is the covenant mentioned in the Surah Al-Maqidah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ بَنِي وقال الله إني معكم لئن أقمتم الصلاة وأتيتم الزكاة وأمنتم برسلي. The verses say that Allah subhanahu wa taala took a covenant from Ben Israel, a mithaq, and that He uh, assigned twelve leaders, the, the, the twelve tribes, and He said to them, I am with you. If you establish the prayer and you give the zakat. And you believe in my messengers, and you support them, and you give me a good loan. He says to them, if you do all of this, if you fill, fulfill all of this, I will expiate your sins, and I will enter you into gardens of paradise. So the covenant, the, the crux of the covenant is obey my orders. Obey the prophets and the messengers, and I will reward you with gardens of paradise. In the other ayah in Surah Al Araf, furthermore, he says that I will grant my mercy to whom? The ones who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, and Nabi Ummi. Wasallam, whom they find written in their books in the Torah and in the Injil. They know who he is, they know his description, they know him better than they know their own sons, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. They know him very well, and they're waiting for him, and they are telling their enemies, we are going to kill you along with the Prophet that will come. Subhanakallah. If you follow that Prophet, this is the covenant. This is the covenant. Not that you are the chosen people and you will stay the chosen people until the end of time, no matter what kind of crimes you commit and disobedience you do. No. This is the fabricated covenant. Correct covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what is mentioned here in the Quran. وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِ أُوفِ بِعَهْدِكُمْ وَإِيَّاهِ فَعَبُونَ And we alone, you should fear. وَإِيَّاهِ فَعَبُونَ And notice here, Arabic linguists, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned first, وَإِيَّاهِ فَعَبُونَ He didn't say fear me. He said me alone, you should fear. Okay? And what we benefit from this What we benefit from this is that him alone and no one else you should fear. So it emphasizes 
that you should only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are going to fulfill this covenant, you are doing so for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is targheeb wa targheeb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them an incentive and at the same time scaring them. The carrot and the stick, if you will. Right? Fear me alone, do not fear anyone else. And this is the this is the, the heart of taqwa. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not fearing anyone else. And making our fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above the fear of anyone and anything else. And when we do that, we have made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the number one priority. And that way, you will not fear the blame of the blamers, the opinion of anyone else, because all you care about is the pleasure of Allah. Don't look at what people say and what people think. Believe me, the pleasure of people is something you will never attain. So seek the pleasure of Allah and fear Him alone. Then he says, Another command. And believe in what I have said down. This is a clear reference to the Quran. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this mean? It means it is a confirmation of what is with you. This is very, very important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala essentially is telling them, I am not asking you to believe in something different and new and completely opposite to what you already have. It is simply a confirmation of what you already have. It's not identical, obviously, because it is going to rectify the corruption and the adulteration that your hands have reaped in this, in this book that was sent to you and in the way of life and the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. So it is a rectification, but it's a confirmation of what you have with you and you know this. You know it full well. From this, of course, this is in general, okay? So the essence of the message is the same. In terms of aqidah, we say that applies to all of the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The essence of the message is the same, brothers and sisters. It cannot change. It doesn't make any sense if you talk about there being so many different religions and they all have a completely different belief system. And then you want to claim that all of this is from Allah? They're all the same when it comes to the belief system. This does not change. What is different is the Sharia. And even then, the Sharia is not completely different. There are minor differences in the Sharia. Otherwise, the essentials are the same. Establish prayer, pay money, give the zakat, though it may be different from one Sharia to another. Do not steal, do not kill. The essentials are the same. The differences are minor in the Sharia. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, They knew. And there were situations and stories where the Prophet would tell them, Don't you have this in the Torah? But they would want to hide it. Because they are changing. They're playing. They're playing with the book of Allah and with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وأمر بما أنزلتم مصدقا لما معكم. Some scholars of tafsir also saw in this the issue of the ayah of Surah Al-A'raf that we just mentioned that they have the description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to follow him when he does arrive. So the description is there. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ You have the description of him. You are told about him and his companions. And here is the Qur'an. It's a confirmation of what you have. So belief, where is the problem here? And similarly, brothers and sisters, in da'wah, when we call others, I'm not calling you to something completely different. It's a confirmation of what you have, especially if you are calling uh, a Jew or a Christian, mostly, let's say, Christians, okay? Just the reality of things, right? It's a confirmation of what you have. It's not completely different. It's not a completely different religion. We believe in Isa السلام, and we love him more than you do. And we address him the correct way. As a genuine and great messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not God, Almighty or God incarnate. It's a confirmation. We're not asking you to leave everything. Do not stop loving Jesus, peace be upon him. But just correct your belief in him. And now, not only is this a confirmation, you're gaining something most important, which is the seal of the prophets, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whom you do not believe in. So you are only gaining the confirmation of what you have that is correct, and it's a rectification of what you, your own hands have corrupted. And I don't know of any Christian that rejects or denies that there are changes and that there are so many changes that happened in their holy book over the centuries unless they are completely ignorant. In one interesting example when I was uh, talking to a Christian lady about it and I was telling her about the changes and the contradictions in the Bible you will never guess what her reply was. Because that ended the conversation. She said, so what? No. Wait, so the Book of Allah has contradictions, has been changed so many times, and you believe this, and your reply is, so what? <laughs> SubhanAllah. If this was, you know, a book you were reading for some human author, you would trash it after you know that, much less the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a confirmation of what you have in general, and especially with regards to uh, the Prophet And do not be the first to disbelieve in it. Do not be the first to disbelieve in this Quran. Why? Now they are being addressed. The Jews around the Prophet ﷺ in Medina are being addressed. Do not be the first to disbelieve in this Quran of your people, of Ben Israel. You are now being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe in this Quran. If you disbelieve, you are the first to disbelieve. You will be the first to disbelieve from your people, from Ahlul Kitab or, for, or from Ben Israel. And of course, uh, that term in Arabic uh, also connotes that uh, you should not, that you should accept what is being given to you. Not and not be the first to disbelieve. In other words, you should be the first to, to believe in what has been given. Scholars had some uh, different opinions 
about the possible feeling of it. ولا تشتروا هير اشترى اشتراء could apply to buying and selling. So a lot of people will understand this ayah to mean do not sell my my verses, my signs, my ayat for a cheap, paltry price. Some scholars of Tafsir understood from this hiding the description of the Prophet وسلم, knowing full well that he is the one described in your books is what is being described here. And by this you are selling the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his signs for a cheap price. This cheap price, the dunya. And whenever you sell that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you for anything, cheap or expensive, low or high price, it's a low price compared to the verses of Allah and his signs. If they give you the whole world to change one ayah, it is definitely qalila. Because this is the greatest of sins. To play with the religion of Allah And Allah tells us in another ayah, do not, like be, do not be like those who took their religion in jest. The most egregious of sins. And it is a, a, a staggering audacity if someone dares to play with the religion of Allah and with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, play around and change things around. So their hiding of the description of the Prophet may be what is meant by this. Uh, some scholars understood from it that you should not take uh, money for the teaching of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And some of the scholars uh, discuss this. Interestingly, uh, one of the Mufassireen, Abu Hayyan al Dalusi, says that this is not what is being mentioned here. And of course, the scholars of Islam uh, have mentioned this and the, the majority of scholars said that it is permissible uh, to take uh, money as in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said uh, that it is the, that the Qur'an is the best thing that uh, can be uh, paid for. But there is some difference of opinion on this and some of them were reading something of, of that nature from, these, from this ayah. Okay? Uh, you may find that the translation says, and do not exchange my verses or my signs for that low uh, uh, price. Wallahu a'lam, it seems that here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, especially because in the next ayah, this may be one of the reasons that uh, we may say it is not about hiding something. Because we see that in the next ayah. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُبُ الْحَقَّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That verse seems to be talking about hiding the truth and replacing truth with falsehood. But وَلَا تَشْتَرُ بِآيَاتِ ثَمَنٍ قَلِيلًا seems to be a general prohibition on uh, using and accepting to use the book of Allah, his verses, his signs for something and for a very cheap, a very cheap price of this dunya. And from this we can see, subhanAllah, you know, 
Allah wa ta'ala protect us of the danger of playing around with the book of Allah, with the words of Allah, changing the words of Allah for what? For someone to be pleased with me, for an organization to be pleased with us, for a nation maybe or a country to be pleased, for a leader to be pleased. reinterpret the verses in a way that makes it more amenable. Subhanak ya Rabbi, Allahu Akbar, wa la tashtabu bi ayati thamanun qadila. Where is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You're playing around with the words of Allah. You don't have the, the, the courage and the audacity to change the words. So you'll play around with the interpretation. And you'll tell laymen who may not understand as much as you about the book of Allah that what is meant by this is this. And you know for a fact that this is not the case. This is what تَشْتَرُ بِآيَاتِ ثَمَرًا قَلِيلًا This is where you are exchanging something about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something most cheap. And that is something that has to do with the dunya. Any kind of adulteration of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any price becomes cheap if something like that is done, God forbid. And me alone, you should fear. In the first one he mentioned, he said, Fear me. Have taqwa of me. And taqwa is a uh, beautiful word and a term that includes the meanings of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding the prohibitions of Allah. Obeying Him with the hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us and have mercy on us and fearing Him and fearing His punishment. Allah Ta'ala A'la. These uh, uh, two verses that we just uh, mentioned are talking about Ben Israel and the verses continue now. And then after that section, we start to read about the stories. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala mentions all of the stories uh, to us. Allah Ta'ala A'la Mujazakum Allah Khayran are there any questions or comments? Yes, Yeah, it's it's a good question. Uh, like we said here, Bani Israel, we know it's a reference to the Jews. Okay, that's a fact. Uh, and usually this is how they are addressed. Mind you, in the Quran, we find the term al Yahud quite a bit. Okay? Especially when he's talking about al Nasar. But not always. So in the verse of Inna Ladina Aman wa Ladina Hadu, so then we find that uh, variant as well. Ladina Hadu. In one interesting verse, Qul. Prophet Ya Yuhal Ladina Hadu Right? Wa qalat al-Yahud wa al-Nasara So you do find al-Yahud And you also find al-Ladina Hadu What does Hadu mean? Also, and, and, and where does it come from? Some difference of opinion uh, between scholars on this So, uh, here He is talking about the Jews and specifically the Jews at the time of the Prophet and apparently and that time most if not all of the Jews were Bani Israel they were children of Yaqub they were of his progeny nowadays this does not seem to be the case and 
they actually talk about the 12 tribes of Israel, 10 of them being missing. Where did they go? They didn't just disappear. Well, good news. A lot of them became Muslim. Okay. But at the time, it seems Allah that a lot of uh, the, or, uh, the, the Jews that are being addressed are indeed Bani Israel. But to say nowadays that they are all Bani Israel is completely false. And this is something that they are advancing and trying to uh, swindle people with to convince them that we are Bani Israel, we are the progeny of Israel, and this is not the case. A lot of them did actually accept Islam. But at the time of the Prophet, وسلم, yes, those Jews were Bani Israel. Why they're being referred to as Bani Israel? I talked about this, okay, about the possibilities for that. One, reminding them of their father, okay, their great great grandfather Israel, Yaqub alayhi salam. Okay? And furthermore, this is a, a term and a title that they like and they aspire to. Wallahu ta'ala. Uh, regarding this issue, actually the, um, some of the Orthodox uh, Jewish priests and those uh, authorities, yeah, rabbis, yes. They, they take this point, which you just mentioned, you know, the, what you just explained. Majority of the Jewish people who are now in Israel, so called, they come from East Europe, yeah. from Poland, from Russia, from Ukraine. They are around yeah. the Caspian. And yeah, it is exactly. uh, historically known that these people, they are converts to, to Judaism. Judaism. Yeah, exactly. for uh, political reasons and so historical. So they say uh, the people who are from the lineage of uh, Yaqub al Salam, they say they are Se Sephardic Jews. Yeah. And the Ashkenazi Jews are the ones who are uh, right. supposedly the others. Yeah. And yeah. majority uh, of this is uh, Allah. Yes, that is correct. You yes. said it's correct. When Israel, they did not live in the Israel. Yes, they did not. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They never did not live in the Exactly. Yeah. In the Middle Palestine, East, it's like Palestine, uh, it was known in the Middle East. But when you use Palestine, uh, it was Egypt. That is correct. But however, the Quran, if you read the story of Moses, said, the body is not here. The word of Judaism, the word of Moses, you mentioned later on, but I think you have all the other sides And many others. Yeah, but many others. Of course, you could only mention later on. Where, later on, where? In the Quran, you mean? In the Quran. In the Quran. Okay. In the prophets that were mentioned in the Asia as religious in India. Okay. Only later on, but Moses, uh, Moses is here. He did not mention I'm Jewish. Well, Musa alayhi salam was sent. The main uh, purpose is that he was sent to Bani Israel and to save Bani Israel from Tiraam. Right? And he himself is an Israelite. Okay? Because he is from the uh, progeny of uh, Levi, Levi, right? One of the sons of Yaqub alayhi salam. So, but to say that uh, they are somehow different, no, this is an address to the Jews. There is no doubt about this. And though you may read it in different places in the Quran, you know that the order of the surahs in the Quran is not chronological, right? So, and Surah Al-Baqarah is a Madani chapter. So this is a reference to Bani Israel, to the Jews in Medina from the very beginning of the time of when the Prophet was in Medina. So they are the Jews. They are the Jews. But yes, uh, SubhanAllah, he's, he's, he's calling them, he's addressing them as Ya Bani Israel. Yes, brother. Bani Israel can be Yahud. Or rather, as the brother said, that many Jews are not from Bani Israel. Yeah. But that's why I said they will claim that genealogy falsely. Okay, trying to convince others, oh, we are the Bani Israel. 
And uh, by the way, the Shia do something similar when they claim that yes, our genealogy is back to uh, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so on. Yeah, of course. But the real, the real Jew did not believe in Jesus. They did mm. not believe that Jesus is God. Right. So in his time, he did not believe in his God. However, if you talk to a real Jew, that he knows the Bible, he knows that Muhammad is God. He is a prophet. But he will not say he's a prophet to us. Of course. So he will say, oh, yeah, to the Jews. He's he's a, to the Arabs. He's a prophet to exactly. us. He's not a prophet to us. Because for them, they still believe that there will be another prophet based on the last one, the gospel of John. 
يعني سبحان الله this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed this is the way they are and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us of them okay and, the, and, and these stories that expose their nature and their actions are a warning to us okay that this is you have to be careful of uh, this kind of people because of what they have done okay this is in no way of course the, the, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will try to paint any kind of criticism of the, of the Jews as anti-Semitic right they forgot that Arabs are Semitic as well uh, this is not the case this is based on their actions you were cursed by Allah because of your actions you were cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of your disobedience. And this is a fact and you know it. Not only that it is mentioned in the Quran. So it's 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 I agree with you, brother, it's mind-boggling. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps mentioning their story as a warning to all of humanity about uh, what they have done, what their hands have reaped, and what they are potentially capable of doing. And of course, the the, uh, the the occupation of Palestine today and the terrorism that they continue to uh, meet out uh, with the Palestinians is uh, is just you know a, a drop in that ocean, right? You know, sometimes people are shocked. Oh, look at what's happening! Look at what they're doing, dear brother, dear sister. These are people who cursed Allah, cursed Allah, blasphemed Allah, changed his signs and his verses and his book, okay, continued to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said some of the worst things about Allah in their book and about the, the uh, prophets and messengers, peace be upon them all. Do you expect? Of course, ultimately they killed messengers and, and, and prophets. Okay, they killed, they killed so many of them. You expect, what do you expect from the people who have done this? You expect to be treated differently? If they killed the prophets, they cannot kill, you know, a few Palestinians living on the land. Well, technically there was nobody there because according to them, it was a land without a people for a people without a land, right? We arrived and there was no one there. SubhanAllah. Land was just ready for them. Okay. So, yes, uh, that's, like we said, one of the reasons this story keeps being mentioned, okay? It's also a warning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us all, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, liberate Palestine and help our believer brothers and sisters there, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeat the enemies of Islam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barakatuhu 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 wa barakatu